Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. A uh, couple of people, they were asking, do we have any official documentation for the worst practices for with Selenium? Yes, we do have that. You can see this page. This is directly coming from Selenium Dev, And there is a separate section that they have created, worst practices with Selenium. And there are around uh, six, seven practices. They have clearly mentioned that you should avoid using Selenium WebDriver. So let's have a look quickly. So first one is the CAPTCHA. As we know that CAPTCHA is short for uh, completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans and the robots is explicitly designed to prevent automation. So do not worry. There are two primary strategies to around CAPTCHA checks. Disable CAPTCHA in your test environment that you can do that. Add a hook to allow test to bypass the CAPTCHA. In the lower environment, you can ask your developer to disable the capture in your lower environment like test or QA environment or dev environment. And then you can uh, write maybe some bypass, some hook to uh, bypass the capture. Also, you can do that. But please do not try to automate capture that you cannot do it. And it's actually created to prevent the automation. Some RPA tool, they say that, okay, no, we can automate, we can crack it. We should not do it. It's a violation of the capture. We should never do it. Okay, so please do not try to automate capture images second one is that the two uh, factor authentication is an authentication mechanism authorization mechanism where one time password is generated using authenticator mobile apps such google authenticator you have to go and get the six digit otp number or something like this or microsoft authenticator or maybe by sms or email that you are getting some otp number to authenticate automating this seamlessly and consistent a big challenge in selenium because selenium is a ui automation tool and these all are uh, uh, i would say not recommended with respect to two-factor authentication because better to use some api or maybe some uh, you know uh, or maybe some uh, services that you use it or maybe uh, disable this feature in your test environment or something like that there are some ways to automate this process but this will be another layer on top of your selenium test it's clearly written and not as secure so you should avoid automating two-factor authentication there are some a few options to get around 2fa they have written disable 2fa for certain users in your test environment as i told you so that you can use those user credentials in your automation disabling two-factor authentication in your test environment completely disable that feature or disable that feature for certain users disable to uh, 2fa in your login uh, from uh, certain ip addresses that you are using it for from your automation point of view and that way we can configure our test machine IPs to avoid this. That's a, such a nice uh, solution and suggestion they have given directly coming from the Selenium dev team. So please do not try to automate two-factor authentication with respect to uh, Selenium. That is not recommended. And if you really want to do that, if you uh, really want to check that, so better to uh, use some APIs internally to factor authentication or something like that. Otherwise, you have to generate uh, talk to authenticator mobile app or something like this but i would also recommend not to use them better to disable two-factor authentication and then start using it third one is the file download selenium does not provide any api you can click on a specific button or link which will start downloading see it's clearly written it is possible to start a download by clicking a link with a browser under selenium control the api does not expose download progress for example let's see 70 percent download is done 80 percent download is done that we cannot validate that we don't have any api in selenium to check that uh, how much percentage of download is done or not or it's completed or not making it less than ideal for testing downloaded files this is because downloading file is not considered an important aspect of emulating user interaction obviously selenium is what a ui automation tool whatever the user is doing on the ui selenium is trying to simulate those actions but according to selenium they clearly say that okay the downloading file is not considered an important aspect of emulating user interaction with the web platform well okay so instead find the link using selenium and required cookies and pass it to the http request library like lip curl or something like that you can do that you can use HTML unit driver can download attachments by accessing them as input stream by implementing the attachment handler interface. The attachment handler uh, interface can be the added to the HTML unit web client. So maybe I can prepare a separate chapter for that. I have already done did a POC on that. I can prepare that. Okay, but please Selenium does not provide any library to automate or to check the file is downloaded or a percentage of the downloading uh, progress. Next one is the HTTP response code. 
clearly return that we should avoid to check the HTTP response codes also. Some people, they do it right, the broken link and all such things on the basis of uh, 500 or 404 error or something like that. Selenium WebDriver is completely different approach to browser automation, saying that uh, preferring to act more like a user, this is represented in the way you write test with the web driver in automated functional testing. Checking the status code is not a particular important detail of a test failure. See this clearly return. The steps that preceded it are more important. See what exactly they say that the browser will always represent the HTTP status code. Imagine for example 404 or a 500 error is coming. For example, let's see this is a medium. URL, you just hit this particular URL with some V's over here and saying 404. So my, as a user, what is your responsibility? As a user, I'll check, okay, yeah, I'm getting 404 or not for this particular page. That's it. This is my user interaction. I'm not going to check in the background what is the response code is coming, either 404 or 500 or something like that, right? Or I can check the title also. See the title of the page for Selenium point of view, the title of the page is saying not found, right? So I would validate either this not found or maybe this div or header, I will validate that exactly same thing they have returned. Imagine you are getting 404 or 500 error. A simply way to fail test when you encounter one of these error pages is to check the page title C or content of a reliable point. Maybe you can check your header, you can check your div tag after every page load. If you are using let's say page object model in the every page class constructor, you can include this check in your C clearly return on your class constructor or similar point where the page load is expected. Occasionally the HTTP code okay, may even be represented in the browser error page and you could use WebDriver to read this and improve your debugging output. I'll show you this is what exactly a simple example that I have created in the form of coding. I'm calling this particular URL, sorry, URL this launching it on Google Chrome. First I'm capturing the title. If you really want to write an assertion, you can write it. And then you can just simple capture that particular element. I'm talking about this particular element. Okay, this entire element that you can capture it. And then you can write an assertion that if that header contains page not found, yes, it contains this uh, page not found or maybe 404 or something, then you can write assertion over here and then quit the browser. So let's quickly run it. And let's see this page is uh, giving you 404 or not. So on the basis of header, I'm checking it. You can see that, okay, yeah, I'm getting, I'm just printing at line number 30, the complete header that I'm printing it, page not found or something like this on medium and then test case got passed over here like that. You can write on the assertion on the basis of your title also, whatever the title is coming, this title not found. So you can write that as well. So let's see, this is the title not found that I'm expecting and an F capital. And then you can check the title also once again over here. If title contains not found, it means your test is passed. This is the recommendation from the Selenium guys. Okay. So that if you insist an advanced solution to capture the HTTP status code is to replicate the behavior of the Selenium RC by using a proxy. So in Selenium RC, if you remember, we were using the proxy to uh, simulate this feature. WebDriver API provides the ability to set a proxy for the browser. You can use the proxies over there and then you can do that. Some people, they use some rest.http client also to get the, uh, to get the status code and then you can validate that as well. But according to that, better to use h1 tag or div tag or title, better to use in that way. Next point is Gmail, email or Facebook API automation, Facebook page automation. Multiple reasons logging into sites like Gmail, Facebook, using WebDriver is not at all recommended. Aside from uh, being against the usage terms of these sites, where you risk having the account shut down, your account will be shut down because they will immediately capture uh, the request is coming from the, some uh, robot or maybe uh, some bots or maybe some automation bots. It's so they will not uh, you allow that and your account will be blocked. In fact, it's slow and unreliable also because let's say you have to read some account, uh, uh, Gmail data or Gmail mail content. You have to log in, then you have to go to Gmail and then go to that particular uh, email ID over there and read the body and get the content with the help of Selenium, which is not at all reliable. Today it's working, tomorrow it's not working. There is no uh, you never know in same thing on Facebook or LinkedIn, such social media sites. Also, we should never do practice on Facebook, LinkedIn or Gmail. The ideal practice is to use that the API you see that email provides providers offer you just API through Gmail API. We have a uh, Google APIs. We have Outlook APIs. We have uh, other maybe Yahoo mail API or something like that. And then, or in case of Facebook, the developer tool service service, which expose an API for certain test account. You can use that test account friends and so forth. I think I have to prepare one video for the Facebook 
how will you get all the accounts your friends and so forth uh, with the help of developer tools services that you can use it although using an api might seem like a bit of extra hard work you will be paid back in speed that's only one time effort and once the api are established and then once you have written the code to call the api which is more reliable and it will be very very fast within a second you will get the entire data from from your mail body or from facebook or linkedin or whatever and it is more reliable and the stable also the api is also unlikely to change because it's not that easy to change the api ui might get changed but api will remain same whereas web pages in the html locators change often and require you to update your test framework such a nice paragraph they have uh, written here perfect so remember this thing uh, we should not automate gmail email or facebook or twitter or or linkedin such uh, web pages or web application we should not automate that logging into third party sites using web driver at any point of your your test increases the risk of your test failing because it makes you test longer also you just need to integrate with the login and just need to capture the otp from there or maybe some mail content over there unnecessary extra line that you are adding it you have to navigate to third party system like gmail or something get the otp from there and then unnecessary your test case also getting unreliable and the lengthy in that case so that <clears throat> general rule of the thumb general rule of the thumb is that longer tests are more fragile and unreliable you should never do that here okay next one is the test dependency a common idea and misconception about automated testing is regarding a specific test order your test should be able to run in any order it should be independent and should not rely on any other test to compile in order to be successful do not try to create unnecessary dependency uh, between two test cases or among multiple test cases that might this test is dependent on this test you never know your test case should be running in any order that you are okay that you are running you should never uh, provide unnecessary dependency between two test cases my test case are dependent on login no better you write login step inside that particular separate test only so whenever i want to execute any specific test it should be executed it should be uh, run properly with without any any sequence or without any specific order so that's why we, the test cases are always atomic and then it should be independent such a nice thing that they have clearly written over here if you are creating unnecessary dependency it means it's coming cons, uh, coming as a considered as worst practice according to selenium next one is the performance testing performance testing using selenium and web driver is generally is not advised obviously this is not a performance testing tool not because it is incapable but because it is optimized it is not optimized for the job that you are unlikely to get good results so many uh, threads that you want let's see 10000 threads it means you don't want to open 10000 browsers first of all and another thing is that there are other things also let's see the web point of view the java script the css all those uh, things also will be loaded that you want to ignore that you just want to hit the api and check that okay my response time is good or not the performance of the apis are good or not so in that case i should avoid performance testing with respect to selenium web driver okay so for example browser startup speed we should never consider because according to selenium first it will start the chrome driver.exe or server start and then send and it will take several time to launch the browser and everything so we should we should not consider that time to measure the performance of the application speed of http servers response of the third party servers that host javascript or css and the instrumentation penalty of the web driver implementation itself so variation at these points will cause variation in your performance result also see it's clearly written over here we should uh, we should not consider these things when you do the performance testing and selenium will take all these things so that's why not a good tool for the performance testing point of view it is difficult to separate the difference between the performance of your website and the performance of the external resources and it's also hard to tell that what the performance penalty is for using web driver in the browser especially if you are injecting some script over there okay so the next one is uh, the link spider it means uh, link spider or a link validator such things you should avoid okay with selenium using web driver to spider through links is not recommended practice not because it cannot be done i can do that i can simply use get attribute or create driver dot find elements total number of links are available on the page and get their src value get their attribute value href value and then i can validate that those links also but because selenium web driver is definitely not the most ideal tool for this web driver needs time to start up it takes time it will start the server and then it will start navigate to each and every page over there so it takes time and can take several seconds up to minute depending on how your test is returned just to get the page and traverse through the entire dom 
So better, instead of using WebDriver, you could save a ton of time by executing maybe some curl or wjet command and uh, using library search beautiful soap and uh, since these methods do not rely on creating a browser and navigating to the page it will not go to any specific browser they are not browser specific you can directly use the curl command or wjet command from the command line and then get all the links or maybe some broken links you can check that you are saving tons of time by using web drive not using web driver for this task okay so this is the last option okay thing that they have given so these are the worst practices i give you an example of link spidering i think um, i have set up some basic things so for example let's say i simply go to my terminal and uh, see i'm using this particular command here for example see i'm using wjet over here spider and uh, recursively ch check each and every page for any application for let's say digitalocean.com this digitalocean.com is having one broken link and see i'm running it when you run this particular command, it will generate one run one dot log file in this particular directory. And you can check uh, with the grep command how many broken links are available. See, it's saying clearly that this is a broken link, found one broken link over here. So it's very fast, super fast, you can do that. For example, let's see now I'm checking with some other website dot github.com. Okay, and I'll do one thing, I'll just open my run one dot. Okay, and then simple run it and see it will start and it will keep capturing all the number of links available on the page so it was just checking and uh, this is just like link not validator link spider it will capture each and every link from the github see it will go internally of different pages on github.com see uh, robots.txt and then github base sets and content.com and a uh, github cloud and something like this and then it's giving some error that error 4034 bidden like that so it will just keep running it. So we are not using any Selenium thing over here. With one single command, you can simply do that. You just need to download WJet on your, uh, this WGET on your uh, terminal or maybe on Windows machine. You can just download it and then run this command with any specific uh, uh, URL and then it will keep capturing it over here. See, 20 links, 25 links now, 21 links now. So it will keep capturing it for for the entire github.com. Now in github.com, there are so many, so many links are there. Okay, so it will go to each and every link and then check it like that. Right guys, so that's all for today. I hope it's clear. Let me just terminate that. Fine. So please do not follow these worst practices with Selenium. Selenium is not uh, made for this. Other than that, I have prepared one video also and uh, simple go and check it over here. Thank you so much guys. Thanks for watching this uh, video. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.